Hi everyone, welcome to the KOPS channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to be setting up Circle CI. Right. So far, we have been working with Gradle, creating tasks, and those tasks uh, is the foundation of what we can, what we're going to do in Circle CI. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. And let's start. So we have here our tasks and now so let me make it this bigger we need we need to uh, start using these tasks right that we created so just a quick reminder I'm going to post the links for the, the video for this video for the links for this video uh, of the tasks but then this is for local run uh this is telling it to start the application that you're going to test using docker uh, before executing the test and these ones are free we are not using docker compose here because in circle ci we're going to use circle ci own strategy to spin up a docker container so what we're going to do here is we have, we're going to go into circle right so i'm going to go to circle ci I'm going to go here to go to app. I'm going to log with my GitHub. Since I'm already logging GitHub, it's going to have access to uh, my projects. Uh, if you take a look here, uh, I have this project in English because I already created a video for the BDD, the Portuguese version. And the project's already here. Even if I, I cannot delete it, the maximum that I can do is unfollow. So I want to start from scratch to show you guys from scratch. So we have the project here. You're going to have access to everything that you have in your in your repository. So you can click here to change organization. I can go to my to my personal, right? Or doesn't really matter. Whatever organization you are, Circle CI is going to have access to it. Uh, and also, it's going to you can you can uh, set up public or private repositories so what I'm going to do I'm going to go into setup project and it's going to it's going to recognize that uh, I'm using Gradle uh, and it's going to give me this uh, file here or right? I can already commit and run whatever I already I, I have here uh, I can use the this config as well uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a little this file, right? But I'm going to explain to you right here what's what's happening here, right? Just to make it easier. So it's using the version two. So if you put version one, it's going to have different kinds of kinds of features, right? So whenever you you're going to do something in circle, just make sure you are using the latest version. Uh, and now we're going to talk about the, the jobs right so now the jobs uh, we have a build job right and this build job is using a docker image of circle ci right uh, that's a uh, docker image of java 8 right i could specify more images here uh, for instance here's an example specify a database but we don't have any database so i'm going to delete this right so I'm also specify my workspace, right? So this is my home repo. And when you talk about home repo, so this is my home, right? So that's the tilde command. The tilde command is for my home. And if when I did CD tilde, it's my home, right? It's the same as doing CD home. Uh, I went to home, right? So, so this is my home. So in, in it's on a folder in my home called repo. I uh, here is setting up the JVM machine. Um, I'm going to leave it is, and now I have the steps of, of that job. So the first step is to do a checkout. So a checkout is when I come here to this code to my repository, I do a git log. I have I have a bunch of stuff that I have here, right? 
So I can I can choose a commit from the past, do git checkout, and I'm going to enter the code of that commit in the past, right? It's not the commit, uh, the head of the branch, like the latest one, it's something in the past, right? Let me go back to main. So, uh, sorry, I'm not in main, I'm here. So, so this is what it's doing, right? And this is very important because it's making sure it's checking out the code that you pushed. Because when you push a code, CircleCI is going to pick that, it's going to recognize that you push something and it's going to run on the code that you push. So the checkout is making sure that it's getting the code that you pushed, right? Because if you think about it, I can push something and another person from my team can push another thing right after I push. So CircleCI needs to make sure that it's going to run the whole pipeline on the code that I push and it's going to put uh, whoever push next on a queue and then it's going to do the same thing but that code specifically. It cannot, it should not, uh, the CircleCI or any other CI should not mess it up this, right? You cannot. Uh, test some jobs in one code and the other jobs in the code that just came you need you need to check you need to run the whole pipeline in that same code right so the next stuff the next part is downloading and caching dependencies right so i'm going to skip this for this explanation right now uh, so I'm going to come back here shortly. So the run greater dependencies is to um, uh, download the, the dependencies that we have in our project, right? So these dependencies that we have here. And then it's going to save the cache, right? So it's saving the cache. It's going to save whatever it downloaded, right? So it's going to download a bunch of libraries and it's going to save it, right? When it saves, it's going to save in this path, home.gradle, right? right? And then the file name is going to be v1 dependencies dash checksum build gradle, right? What does this checksum do? Checksum is going to do, so let me do app build.gradle. Checksum is going to make sure that the file did not change or not necessarily the file did not change, but it's going to give me a unique identifier for that file, right? So in this case, this is the, the, the unique, this is the unique identifier, right? So by putting this in the name, it's going to know that uh, that file ha has changed or not, right? So let me show you this. So if I just put an extra space here and I do a checksum again, you're going to see that the checksum is different and I only added an, an, an empty space, right? So if I delete this and I do checksum again, you're going to see that's the same as this one, right? So this is a unique identifier for that file, for that file in, in uh, that file specific content, right? So now we have saved the file with a unique name Great, and it's going to run the test. I'm not going to put run the test here. I'm going to delete it. What I'm going to do is I want to persist this in a workspace. So I'm going to persist workspace. What I'm going to persist is I'm going to say the root of the folder, or the root of what I want to persist is the folder that I'm in right now. And the path is Gradle, right? So that means it's going to save everything that we uh, we say is going to persist everything that we save in this cache. Why I need to persist uh, since uh, I, I'm saving the cache, right? So the saving cache is I'm just putting everything on a, uh, a specific uh, on a specific folder. But between jobs, I need to make sure that it's saving in another place because everything here is a container. Everything here is temporary. When the job finishes, it's going to come to another job and it's going to forget about everything in the previous job. So 
when you think about this, this first job is going to get deleted, everything related to that in the machine is going to get ignored, deleted, and then it's going to go to the next one. So persistent workspace is a way of me sharing information between two jobs. So in that, and that's why we have this specific step. So now imagine that we ran the dependencies, we saved the cache, and we persisted the cache. So now we need to be able to restore this cache. So what we're going to do is, okay, I want to store the cache. And the keys of this cache is v1 dependencies and the checksum build gradle. So it's going to look for the, the same file that is saved, right? If does not find, it's going to fall back to this one, which is going to be the latest cache that it found. It might not be the same, but it's going to be the latest. And when the Gradle dependence comes, it's going to download whatever it missed, right? So here's just going to download whatever was not uh, already saved here, right? So it's going to, Gradle dependence is going to figure out whatever your computer already has, and it's going to download what, what, your, computer, what your computer does not have. So that's pretty much it for this file. I'm going to commit and run. You have a file called .circleci here, right? And this file is, uh, it was created by circleci when we committed and push, right? Uh, you also can download and commit it yourself, but you're going to notice that this file is a .circleci, which is a hidden file, right? So, I uh, sorry, a hidden uh, directory. And when we click here, we have a config YAML file. And in the config file, you have the content that we have just updated, right? So this is the content that we created. And uh, it's already here. And then we, we need to start working on our tests, what our tests looks like right here in these jobs. Because now we need to create other steps, sorry, other jobs. This is the build job. We need to create other jobs in order to create our pipeline, right? So this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the, the notifications of my next videos. If you like it, give the thumbs up. And it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I see you on the next video.